This video is intended to overview how to use the software associated with the scanning electron microscope that is visiting your school. Though there should always be a representative available to assist you, having some familiarity with the software beforehand will let you work faster and get better results with the SEM. To start, double click on the TM3000 program icon. When the program opens, you will need to press the start button to activate the electron gun inside the SEM. Because the SEM needs to work in a vacuum, the start button will only be active if the mic is on and the vacuum chamber is already sealed, so you'll need to prepare and load your samples in advance. Heating up the electron gun will take a minute, longer if the humidity in the chamber is high. Once the electron gun is firing, you should see an image on the TM3000 program display. Let's take a look at the user interface. The buttons across the top control what we see in the actual display window. Fast and slow relate to the refresh rate of the screen. The freeze button captures the current state of the display and holds it. This is useful if you want to take a picture or just observe something without risk of it fading out of focus. The quick save and save buttons are your main way of capturing images. They do the same thing, which is save an exact image of what's on the display, but save takes a bit more time and saves with better resolution. In addition to the visual display, your save will also include the magnification of the image and a scale diagram at the bottom of your picture. It's important to note that taking a picture will always freeze the screen. To be able to manipulate the image again, hit the fast button to resume normal microscope activity. Moving the display itself is done by manipulating the controls on the outside of the microscope. The left dial moves the display left and right, and the right dial moves the display up and down on your screen. The only thing you can't change is the height of the sample. This is set when you put your samples in the machine in first place, which is why it's important to calibrate your samples correctly. Keep in mind that when the display screen is frozen, you can still use the controls to move the specimen stage inside the microscope. This means that if you forget to unfreeze the screen, you may just be moving your specimens around blindly and making it difficult for you to figure out where you were on your specimen stage. The first tool you have to manipulate your display is the magnification tool. This is much easier to use than a traditional light microscope. To increase magnification, click on the plus button. To decrease magnification, click on the minus button. You can also use the two magnification preset buttons. Ours here are set to 100 times and 1000 times magnification. These are especially useful if you're looking at many similar objects and you know roughly the level of detail that you need to observe them at. Once you've changed the magnification, your display will likely be blurry and need a little bit of adjustment. The remainder of the buttons on the user interface allow you to do just that. Adjust the focus and the brightness contrast of your display. Both of these tasks can be done automatically using the auto focus button, for example or manually using the focus plus and minus buttons. You can also control the focus by clicking and holding your mouse pointer inside the display and dragging to the left or to the right. For brightness contrast, you're probably best to use the auto BC button, but again, you may adjust using the individual plus and minus buttons. Unless you know a lot about cameras, this is probably not recommended. To see your image from a different angle, you can use the rotational buttons at the bottom of the display. The indicator at the top position is default, but you can hit the other buttons to change your rotation to 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees. Trying to adjust your image while it is flipped is extremely difficult and very disorienting, so you should certainly set the display back to its default position before you touch the stage positioning dials again. Finally, you are able to adjust the intensity of the electron gun using the voltage buttons at the bottom of the UI. 5 kilovolts is usually best for the surface details, 
15 kilovolts gives the best resolution, and the EDX mode is best for the EDX add-on chemical analysis. 15 kilovolts is probably the best choice for the average SEM user. For more information on how to use the EDX to do chemical analysis, please check out the video that we've created on that topic. This video was made possible by grant funding received through Alberta Innovates.